Hello, great people. How are you doing? Have you had Chimamanda on Arise TV? Oh, finally, she went there and I thought she is going to, okay, it, like mend ways <laughs> with APC. Oh, she went with Bulala. In fact, eh, a child reported their t-shirt their to the mother. And when she went to school the next day, the teacher now can't her the more. <laughs> That is what Chimamanda did to APC. And by the way, there is something I have noticed in this part of our world. Uh, people like to leave the major issues and try to hint on something that is not important. That is the case of APC. Rather than make amends, though it, it's not mendable, it's not mendable. Yeah, they can't mend it. The, the only way they can mend what they have destroyed is to quit uh return the certificate of return there's a, there's no way they can mend it even tinubu's uh, call for healing process cannot mend it so they leave the issues the main issues and you know they, their focus is now chimamanda said this and that can you imagine how shameless these people are their focus is on uh, chimamanda wrote the united states of america uh telling them that um this and that about the election that the election is you know made with inconsistencies and so what let's face the reality was the election smooth compared to every other election in nigeria it, was that election anything to write home about and why is it that if somebody speaks about the election you you get um angry Oh, she should commend the election when things did not go right. You expect her to commend the election or because she is a voice. In fact, this is the kind of voices we like and not like that professor who, you know, these people are supposed, people in that level are supposed to use their weight to better their society. Yes, people that are highly placed by one reason or the other are supposed to use that their rank in the society to better that their society but look at what what one professor was spilling thank god for people like chimamanda adishie i would like to show you this video on arise again and we'll be right back to analyze it um well i i, I see that when i wrote that letter because i think it's important to preserve the truth Right. Um, I think that when something like this happens in a country, it's really important to tell the story of what happened. One of my favorite poems um, has this line, it's by Robert Lowell, and it says, and yet, why not say what happened? So I wanted to say, what happened. say what happened. And what happened is that this was an election that was, was really unforgivably flawed, and there's evidence for that. And I felt it was important to say that. But also, I wanted to um, I wanted to call out the U.S. for what I consider a kind of two-facedness when it comes to Africa. So, you know, the U.S. has a long history of complicity in, you know, sort of non-democratic um, elections on this continent. So, recently in Congo, uh, two or three years ago, they endorsed an election that was an absolute sham. But then the same U.S. will turn around and criticize Congo for not being democratic. And so my point was to say, be what you say you are, right? You cannot, you cannot criticize African countries for being undemocratic while at the same time endorsing something that is quite self-evidently undemocratic. Well. Yes, and I think, I think maybe the most glaring is that we Nigerians all saw these mutilated election sheets, right? We all saw them. We saw polling unit agents talking about how um, what they had from the polling unit was not what was then announced formally, officially, or uploaded formally, officially. And, and I think for me, that's a really striking um, reason and an example of how this election was was not about technical glitches. And can we also realize that Nigeria is full of very bright young people in tech? Um, there's no reason for that excuse of technical glitch. And the other question then is, if it was a technical glitch, why was it, why was it possible for most people to upload the results of the other federal elections, but not the presidential? 
Um, and, and I think most of all is that there's just been this resounding um, unfortunate silence from, from INEC and from the chair of INEC. I think Nigerians deserve the respect um, of an institution that's supposed to shepherd their democracy. So nobody's come out to explain to Nigerians how that happened. You know, there's a statement about technical glitches. It's unconvincing. And knowing how much hope and trust that Nigerians invested in this election, knowing that Nigeria is a low trust society, means I think that if people really are sincere and there's really nothing to hide, then you make an extra effort to go out and explain to Nigerians what happened. Um, well, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's very useful criticism. I should say first of all that I've never been phased by criticism. I mean, I wrote this, of course, knowing fully well that there would be criticism from certain quarters. Um, and it's been, I've seen a few things people have sent to me and it's kind of been amusing to read the, um, to read the juvenile fulminations of non-juvenile people. But that said, um, I actually did try very hard. And I should say, I have two homes. I have, I have a home here in Lagos, I have a home in the US. Um, I'm very often here. I tried very hard to get my PVC. And the reason I tried very hard is because I had been assured that technology would save us. Right, that, that he had walked in, or Shun walked in Ekiti, um, and I think in Anambra, that it would save us. And so I really tried. And we should also talk about how difficult it was to collect PVCs and how that in itself is a form of voter disenfranchisement. And so I had done the first part, but then I couldn't collect my PVC. And so yes, did not vote. But my not voting does not mean that I cannot comment on an election. I'm a Nigerian citizen. Um, I, I, every Nigerian citizen has a right to have an opinion about this election. And so when people say um, that Beavers walked, but IREV didn't walk, which is sort of a way of um, countering the accusation that technology, that te the technology was manipulated, really the response is both have to walk for the election to be credible. Right, so Beavers was about making sure that we didn't have ghost voters, that you know, people who were actually there voted. But, but that it defeats the purpose if you then do not upload the results because those results that you have sort of accredited, that you've, you've made sure that real people voted, but then those real results, we can't see them in real time. We cannot see them as um, Professor Yakubu um, Mahmoud said. He said, and I'm going to quote because I've read this so many times, um, that the public would be able to view the polling unit results as soon as elections are finalized on election day, right? So I think that's a really important thing to, to talk about and to address with the Nigerian people. Um, the Electoral Act says that INEC, you know, gave INEC the legal backing to have electronic transmission of, of um, results and did say in a format that INEC would decide. Right? And we know that format because the chair of INEC told us what the format would be when he said that these results would be uploaded um, at the end of voting from the polling units. And that was not done. And it seems to me strange to sort of deflect from that important issue and talk about how someone, you know, um, is not in Nigeria and how... So, th th those are not the points. The point is what happened? Yes, what Andy, happened? What happened? Uh no, no, and um, I'm not worried about, at all. Again, I think that these are things that try to deflect from what is really important and what is at stake. It would be very useful if people could point out what is untrue in the letter. Right, so I, I think it's important, you know, we talk about, um, we all know these stories of people who complained about, you know, how we voted at the polling unit is not what we're seeing reflected in the results. Um, all of those stories, which yes, are. Uh, the anecdotes, um, but I think they give us useful insight into what happened in that election. In a way, it, it becomes a kind of, all of those anecdotes together become a kind of, um, a kind of tidal wave of truth telling. And I think that the rumors surrounding this election are part of the story of this election. If you leave a gap in information, people will try to fill that gap. It's how human, it's how human minds work. 
And again, like I said, this is our country, is such a low trust society. And we're so desperate to believe in something. And then we believe in this election. It doesn't work out well. And nobody, nobody gives us a convincing reason. So of course, people are going to rumor about, um, you know, people being compromised. Also, our political landscape is, is you know, steeped in, in, in people being compromised. So I'm not, I'm not worried about that. I think that um, any fair-minded person in this country who's honest will acknowledge that these rumors are circulating. I said very clearly there is no evidence for them, but I do think it's important to, to say in the story of this election that many people are starting to think that what explains what happened is this compromising. Well, to address the first part, um, and you're right, tribes, tribesman is such an outdated and strange expression, which I think also says something about whoever is using it, right? Um, I think that, that that kind of accusation is, is a practice of what um, psychologists call projecting. So you're doing something, but then you accuse someone else of doing it, even though they're not. Um, I, I did not support Peter Obi because he's um, Igbo as I am. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a person who does not um, take positions lightly. And so while I very much admire um, Peter Obi, respect him, there are many other Igbo men who I admire and respect, and I would never vote for them for president because I just don't think they would make good presidents. And so my support for Peter Obi is actually rooted in, in real things. It's rooted in um, my faith in his ability. And actually, I, I got to know him, um, I got to know Peter B years ago when he came to um, pay homage to my parents because he had heard that my father was the first professor of statistics in Nigeria and that my mother had um, retired as the first female registrar um, of the University of Nigeria. And so this man just sort of arrived and said he wanted to pay homage. And I was very impressed by that because it showed me how much he values education. And then he becomes governor of Anambra State and he takes Anambra State to number one in education. Um, and I remember being very impressed by the story of how he had given his personal phone number to all of the um, senior prefects in secondary schools in, in Anambra, which wow. I think also showed me that he's interested in what That's ordinary nice people world. think. Right? Yes. You know, you don't just want to hear from the administrators, you want to hear from the students about what's really happening. And um, his focus on insecurity, um, he really tackled kidnapping in Anambra. And I also remember that he, um, he really sort of clashed with the Anambra elite when he was tackling yes. insecurity and, and kidnapping. And that showed me that he's quite decisive. He even has a bit of a stubborn streak, you know, if he's, he's very focused on things. And so that's really why I support him. Um, so this idea of, of, of sort of ethnicity is, is just really, again, I think it's a way of deflecting. Let's focus on what really matters. It's unfortunate that, you know, and, I, and, and can I just say that I think that it's only one part, one part of the political spectrum that is politicizing ethnicity. And I think it's very unfortunate. You know, I don't think most people in Nigeria really care about ethnicity as much as they care about having a country that works. You know, we want good leadership. We want the hospitals and the schools and the roads to be good. And whether, and, and that affects everyone, Igbo, Yoruba, Ijo, Igbo, it affects everyone. I still do. Um, I, I have a lot of love for Professor Sharinka. Um, I admire him, I respect him as a thinker, as a writer. Um, I think everyone should read The Man Died and Ake, his memoir is beautiful, right? Um, but at the same time, I, I disagree very strongly with him about this particular issue. And actually, because I respect Professor Sherenka so much, I went back and watched the interview. I had watched it when it aired initially, but I went back and watched it because I thought, am I missing something? And I, I, I think it. fascist is a really strong word. You know, fascist actually often makes me think of Mussolini's Italy. But I think we use it now, Mussolini. you know, sort of to, uh, address this kind of authoritarianism that's often populist and right-wing, you know, like in Hungary and, and even the, the former American president. And when you look at those situations, you can see why they have been termed fascist. Um, and I, I did not see any reason that um, Mr. Dati Baba Ahmed's interview would have been termed fascist. 
You know, I think he was making a very strongly um, felt point about the elections. Um, what he was saying, which again, I thought seemed fairly reasonable, is um, that uh, if, the, if our democracy is rooted in our constitution, and you then swear in a person who's been elected unconstitutionally, then you are in fact ending democracy. It's, I think it's quite a reasonable um, position. Of course, we can argue about what that bit in the constitution means, right? And I'm actually grateful for this whole election period because it's made me read things I probably never would have, such as the Nigerian constitution, and also made me have quite a few suggestions for editing. But anyway, um, I think now we're talking about what does and mean, right? So, so Mr. Dati Baba Ahmed is saying that it's you know two thirds and the FCT, and that that's separate, and it's a reasonable argument. You know, and is a conjunction. We, we use it in that context often to mean plural, right? So we say um, Aisha and Yemi are coming, and we don't say Aisha and Yemi is coming. That's because they're two separate things, two separate entities. And of course, the, the court will interpret. But I don't, think, I don't think it's unreasonable for educated Nigerians who can read and who know what the word and means to make their own interpretations and to argue it. And of course, the fact that the Labour Party is in court means that they do not believe that this election is, consti is constitutional. And so I, I just didn't, um, I, I didn't quite see why it would be um, termed fascist. I mean, we could, I think um, a charitable way of reading Professor Schoenka's comment is that Professor Schoenka himself, um, I think it's fair to say that he is not given to restraint in language um, <laughs> in general. And so maybe that's where that word fascist came from. Uh, however, I have suggestions for what we could use fascist for. We could use fascist for INEC. <laughs> Because, as it is right now, many Nigerians feel deeply cheated by INEC, um, deeply disenfranchised by INEC. And there is an authoritarianism, which obviously is the basis of fascism, at the center of manipulating an election. Um, because what you're doing is you're gagging people, you're forcibly taking away their voice. That is fascist. Fascist is all of the violence that happened during the elections. Um, Fascist is the way that some people remain silent about, about that violence. Um, fascist is, uh, you know, fascist is a, is a government that hasn't come out to address the, the very tangible and palpable discontent in this country. You know, I think that, um, that and when I say that fa we can use fascist for INEC, what I mean is the fact that, you know, so many of us, including myself, are convinced that this was not in any way technological um, glitch. I think that Professor um, Yakubu had an opportunity for heroism, and I think he wasted it spectacularly, um, because he could very easily have become the hero of not just Nigerians, but Africa, because so many Africans are watching. Um, they were so inspired by what happened before this election and the, the obedient movement. and and. So, you know, I also think that the president, um, President Buhari, missed an opportunity for heroism, maybe his last chance at heroism, because Nigerians do not feel that he, I think Nigerians felt before the elections that he meant well and meant um, Out of to time. support credible elections. I don't think many Nigerians think that now. Right. And I wish that he had taken a, a page from um, you know, the former Very president. Very briefly, because we're out of time. He was a really good man, a moral man. Right. Hello, great people. That's as far as we can go on that video. Let's begin to analyze it. And let's start from where she was asked. She supported Peter Obi. And, um, you know, it was as if um, supporting her tribesmen. Uh, Chimamanda is from Anambra state, just like Peter Obi. Uh, but she said she didn't do it um, based on tribe, no. That there are some Igbo men too that she cannot support, even though she admires them, just like she admires Peter Obi. And we've said, he, as we've said this before here, um, if I see people like um, Ojuz Okalo, Roshas, 
Hopus or the Ma contesting against Yemi Osibanjo, who is not from my tribes too, or uh, from my ethnicity. I will vote Osibanjo. I will not vote Ojo Zokalo. I will not vote um, Mbadeju. Oh, sorry, late Mbadeju. It's now late. Uh, we, you had Mbadeju. It's late now. I will not vote for certain Igbo men when they are uh, they raise them and uh, they are against um, Yemi Osibanjo. So it's not about tribe, that's what she's pointing out. Uh, it, she said it's about her faith and, you know, in Peter B's ability. He uh, said Peter B gave uh, his personal number to uh, all senior prefects of secondary schools in Anambra. You know what that means? How many governors can do that? He wants them to interact with him, call him, tell him certain things, not just listening from their um the proprietors of the school or the principals he wants to hear what they got to say you know somebody that you know he's so down to earth he he wants to communicate with the people properly get what they, they say you know the school can give you only uh, the surface of the matter uh, the school authorities but when you hear from the people that it directly affects can you imagine And during Peter B's time, Anambra became the first in terms of education. Anambra was leading Wayek because of what Peter B did. Peter B equipped Anambra schools and the impact is still felt in today. So there are certain things, you, you know, and now let me add, she didn't mention this, integrity. Best among the rest. Yes, based on what we see. We have seen his records. He left money, unlike any other governor i have not had that any governor in nigeria left money in office to the tune of billions for his um successor he left money in office at while living but some are you know they leave the state indebted heavily indebted before they go but people be left money what are we saying and how did people be dealt with uh, insecurity he, he he was so harsh and this made him have problems with certain key players and factors in the in Anambra State then which led to his um, impeachment. I watched a particular video, Peter B was present at the demolition site of a, an alleged kidnapper. So uh, based on what she said, these accusations are, are, are attempts at trying to deflect from the real issue. And these same people who are talking about um, tribal sentiment are the people who are actually involved in that. They accuse others of what they do. They are the ones actually promoting such. Each time at the, um, there's an election season, in Lagos State in particular, it is time to point out who has Igbo parents, who is Igbo and who is not Igbo. Igbos are here to take your place, this and that. Sending certain bad signals so those people that are accusing her of um promoting you know okay supporting p2b because it's uh, he, um, from his tribe and actually the people who are using that tools now let's get to <laughs> You know, uh, they, they mentioned Wole uh, they Inka. They are almost like people in the same line, uh, literary giants. Shimamanda is coming up. So, so Wole Inka is already established. And how, what will be her reaction to uh, Wole Inka's um, remark on Dati? <laughs> the fascist statement. That you know, that is said, um, entering government um, should be set up that uh, Tinubu did not win constitutionally. And while she still respects Waleso Inka, she disagrees with that um, particular notion or idea or comment by Waleso Inka. And for her, she has to play the stuff over and over to, to make sure this was coming from a revered professor. 
He said uh, the, the, the term Wale Sorika used was so harsh. She never expected that to come from somebody like that. Meanwhile, um, he said he has a liberty of, you know, usage of several terms, <laughs> perhaps anything that comes. Now, concerning um, having 25% in 24 states and Abuja, just like Wayek, having a five credits which must include English and mass. Uh, you, you see, there are some occasion you're entering into a particular school, you must have English, you must have certain credits, then you must have English or mass. These are preconditions. Now, she gave an illustration that is also very nice. She said, Aisha and Kemi are coming. You cannot say, Aisha, Kemi is coming. Did you get that? Aisha and Kemi, they are two people. So, they said you have, you have to win 25% in each state and you have to get 24 um, at least 24 states. Then, and Abuja, Abuja is, you must, after getting those, meeting the, the demands as in having those states, you need to have Abuja as well. So, she went on, Labour Party went to court to seek redress. And there is nothing wrong with that. Mahmoud wasted an opportunity for heroism, just like Buhari. Look at the small Jonathan did. Yes, the small Jonathan did. Jonathan has been invited to several countries to monitor election. He has gotten several awards. This would have been the best with the beavers and the, you know, Irish Potter. Oh my God. It was to be the most perfect. In fact, it was to be what other African countries would emulate. But Buhari and um, Mahmoud messed up big time. This is what, at the end of the day, if they had, anyway, they still have like uh, 48 days to mend these things. It would have, this would have been, their name will be recorded in history with the golden pins. You know, she was asked to react to the letter she wrote to the United States about uh, the Nigerian election. And in her response, she said, Nigeria's democracy is a horror one. Nigeria's horror democracy. And uh, she talked about USA in particular uh, playing a two-faced kind of a thing. Uh, we had US criticize Congo's election. And how can US congratulate Dinobu? Uh, it is abnormal. Having understood what brought about his being announced a winner, I was arguing with, okay, not really an argument. I was discussing with an elder. He said, even Afghanistan is now recognized. It happens that this world is somehow, uh, terrorists could emerge leaders of a country and the world bodies, uh, international community will still congratulate them. Look at Afghanistan now. I think they will have a seat in the UN. I will not be surprised. So why U.S. criticizes certain people's democracy they approve of? It's not proper now. So to her, it's an unforgivable flaw election, that Nigeria's election. And while as her evidence, they say she is not in Nigeria, how can she make up things? How can she say the election is fraud? Does she need to be in Nigeria to know what happened? There are, you know, there are so much evidences. Anywhere you go, you see, you know, for example, the case of um, mutilated ballot paper sheets. There are many videos snatching up ballot papers. And um, INEC officials complaining that uploaded results, uh, whether read time or not read time, results at the polling units are not the same as what INEC uploaded or what INEC announced. It's not about technical glitches, and we agree with that. It's not about technical glitches. There was real time upload of um, the House of Reps, the Senate election, and somehow an abrupt end of 
the upload of presidential it's not about technical glitch it's a, a, a clear attempt at disenfranchising nigerians it's a criminal attempt and when she airs her opinion they are telling her uh, they are, you know they are pouring her as if she has no right to air her opinion is she not a nigerian she has two homes like she claimed she lives in nigeria and she lives in united states of america and she's one single person although she's you know somehow due to her literal prowess and you know li in literature uh, she is highly placed somehow uh, highly placed people don't they have right to um air their opinion they have such rights this is the worst election in the history of human beings and i i i i will be surprised if any well-meaning somebody will hail this election as having gone down well no this is the worst and she did the right thing and i'm so happy for this um her being a guest at uh, rice tv her responses <laughs> uh, she's not afraid of saying the truth yeah she has to say things as it is viewers what do you think add your comment on the comment section please if you have not subscribed to our youtube channel subscribe follow us on facebook twitter and instagram for more updates bye bye for now